also a special one, um, is Mr. Anthony Eng. Uh, Mr. Eng is the executive director and board member of Civic Leadership USA, or CLFF now. Um, he has over 25 years of experience working with nonprofit organization, uh, providing guidelines in strategic planning, um, managing consulting, and uh, program development and evaluation. He is also extremely successful in fundraising and public relations. So, um, besides from that, I was told that he was an award-winning composer as well as a really successful chef. So, but I digress. Uh, today, he will share his experience, especially in the subject of fundraising with you. Let's welcome Mr. Um, Anthony Eng. Well, first, I need to have a disclaimer. I never run any campaign, so I should be disqualified to tell you anything. <laughs> so take it for a grain of salt. Um, for someone who was trained as a classical composer and then go into foundation, grant making for arts and culture, community development and historic preservation. Then how it got me to here, uh, you can blame it on Norm Minada. Uh, 15 years ago when I was in, in a DC, he asked me to uh, lead a workshop, teach grassroots fundraising to 120 uh, congressmen uh, in Washington, D.C. That was the first time that I know uh, the real picture, what it is, looks like. So what I'm going to tell you is like, first I want to get to know you a little bit. How many of you are first time running campaign? And how many of you are thinking to going to run a campaign? Or contemplating? And how many of you really interested in a successful campaign vs just fundraising? So I can gauge, because I only have 15 minutes to do, I won't be able to go any uh, deep. So how, how do I do this? Okay. All right. I'll be very fast. Uh, but I do want to share with you one thing I never tell anyone, uh, that I also from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. I should talk to Lily. I spent 20 years over there. And in fact, one thing I, I didn't tell anyone, uh, I was appointed uh, by Free State. I was the Tri-State uh, Commissioner on EOC Committee, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. And that was an eye-opening experience. But it was an appointment, so I didn't go through what they have to go through. So, so uh, take it from a different perspective. Very fast. I'm going to just uh, very simplify the one, two, three, my, my rule. Number one, when you become a candidate, you need you to go through and each of the bullet actually has another workshop to it, but you can, you can find information. You need to confirm you meet the requirement, and you do background research, and then you hold an exploratory committee meeting. What does this mean? It means that you get your family together, your closest circle, your buddy-buddy that you have it together. It means that you calculate your ammunition and how you're going to go forward before you jump in. Then you collect the required signature, complete your registration form. Those, you already done that. After you've done all that, then you file, you file your petition and form. Just a very quick. So I bet some of you already done that. Second, organize your campaign. You need to build your platform. And two of the uh, veterans already talked a lot about how you build your platform from getting the name list, getting the endorsement, getting a lot of those. Uh, I can go into detail later when you have action, but I, I just want to skip really fast. Device a written campaign plan. Why it is important? Because uh, people tend to forget. 
and there's a lot of details. If you don't have something like a project plan to keep you going, then you will miss out something. Choose people to manage and coordinate your campaign. That is very important. It is a make or break decision. So there's a lot of insight, but I, I don't want to go into the detail. One, two, three, campaign for election. Number one, as we all said, raise money, recruit volunteers. Don't take it less serious than raise money. Sometimes whoever you recruit your volunteer determine how your campaign can raise. Get your message out. They all talk about using technology. Remember, technology is a good servant, but a bad master. But now we have a lot of free technology using the social media, but with a grain of salt. And also, whoever those in IT, you heard about that term called um, data mining. If you know what is data mining, that will help you to find your prospects or we call it the big fish. Pay attention to voter response. And most of the people missing out this, that's why they cannot push that last 10 yards. And I can tell you from the experience I look at, it is easier for Asian American candidate to get on the first term. But the real deal is when they get re-elected, that is the real test. Okay. And I need the second one. Because I, I need to be fast. So, so uh, if I skip those, you have questions, you can ask me later on. But I, I want to just go through this. This is what everybody more interested in. Uh, it's not coming out. Okay, thank you. All right, campaign financing. So you want to raise money, and, but, but first point I want to, money is not the only solution, but only an advantage for you to win. Uh, I could say that, but I should take it back because California State, it is not win by the best candidate, it is by the richest candidate. Um, Fundraising is a delicate art. Actually, it's a science. Require what? Long-term relationship building. If you're into fundraising, you need to remember that. It is not the one-shot deal. Everyone you meet, everyone you talk to, and your roller deck's growing. You can count it far back to 10 years ago. I see someone in, in the crowd that actually is very articulate and meticulous. I see Andy Lee. I met him a couple of years ago through a papa. And, and he listened to all this and went back and started. I see he got involved with the city, with the county, with the rotary, and not just equip himself. Actually, he's building long-term relationship, good one. And also, he's not just hold it in his pocket. He want to share. So he came to me say, Anthony, I want to do a monthly civic literature forum in Tri-Valley. I say, bless your heart, let's do that. And so he used the monthly meeting to share knowledge with all people in Tri-Valley who are willing to step up let alone a school board or city council, he bring in all those contacts. Now you know what? All those contacts now is under his Rolodex in a closed circle. So it's an investment. Second is well thought out personal communication. I could not uh, say it more. That two gentlemen already uh, like testified this how you get your message out, how you articulate them, it's really de determined how far you can reach to those people. Because, yes, we might not know everyone, but if your message calculate or, or 
articulate in a way that you have cultural sensitivity and also true to itself that are solving a real issue. You reach the people you would never imagine. But those are the, the things that we need to achieve. And then the last thing, technology is a good servant and a bad master. I already mentioned why. Let's go into the second. Key to your success. I'm not going into the detail for the traditional fundraising. You all done that, be there, and, and did from Boy Scout cookie to uh, doing dinner at your home. It's up to your imagination. If you come to me later, I can give you a hundred ways of making money without asking. And what I want to mention is utilize social media and data mining to do what? To strengthen donor ties. The thing is like we're all so busy. You can only meet so much people in person. So you have to use uh, the data mining to to do what? To grow your prospect list and connect the dots. Why I say that, particularly in nonprofit, if you have a course such as, um, give me one course, just name some course, so I can give you some example. Uh, a school issue. Okay, a, a special special ad on some children. Um, what you can do is data mining. You can actually find who are the donor who have supported the same cause around the country. And then start from that one tier. You look at your own board and your, your own circle. Share the list with them. Does your uncle, your nephew, your niece know any one of those? Or you serve on any committee with them? Second. When you find the lane, that is your, we call the door opening. And those, you better prepare everything to go in because we, we're talking about seven figure, big fish. It's, a, it's another a ball game. But I also want to say that, you know how Obama, when he first run and get through those multi-million in a week? You know who behinds them? He got the whole Google's uh, uh, crew doing all this so that he can reach all these ordinary people through email, email, phone call, and all this, all automated. It's not about a million dollar gift. It's about $50 each person. But if you can reach millions of them in a week, that is also the power. So think differently, okay? Make, making the donor experience more akin to customer service. That is what we call to avoid donor fatigue. If you keep going back to that same 50 people, you will dry them up and, and kind of uh, burn them out very fast. So you have to making that experience almost they are as the customer. At the same time, you develop new contact. At the same time, you want to utilize technology so you can making your website or your information one click shopping is easy in the norm. Oh, hi, Stuart. There's another running candidate. Welcome. And Instant customer service expect. That is what the donor uh, were thinking. So the, the last, I leave you with something to think about. If you wonder what are the donor wanting and what you can match with, using the technology, you can personalize content on any channel without have to write your own letter. And I was surprised. I received some of those solicitations with my first name and have, a, have one line that can immediately, like a shake hand, knowing me. That is very personalized, out of a brew. Self service portal. If you make it easier for your donor, they click in, they can pull out credit card and do this. 
you are halfway to success. Recognition for their work means that if you know them a little bit, when you mention this, this immediately con uh, you connect them. Micro target messages. It is when you have your audience segment, then you can do this. So the rest of them, I, I don't want to go in detail, but it's just a food for thought that you can utilize. Why I mentioned this? Because we are in Silicon Valley. There's a lot of young folks out there knowing all this technology. If you link them with a humanity reason, you might get those volunteers that you could not even buy because those are real talents. And I stop here. Thank you.